It's you and me, Megatron. <laughs> Why would Plastic Disaster throw his life away so recklessly? How's it going, guys? It is Plastic Disaster, and for my 100th video, I'm gonna take a look at something I haven't done in a while building a Flame Toys Transformers model kit. But not only that, I'm taking a look at Megatron, the leader of the Decepticons. I reviewed a Flame Toys Optimus Prime, so I think it would be fair if I review a Flame Toys Megatron. Jumping right into the review, taking a look at the box art, we see Megatron reaching his arm out. I don't know what he's reaching for. Now, I know it says Decepticon version, but get this, before that this version was released, there was an Autobot version where he has the Autobot logo instead of the Decepticon logo. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I never read the IDW comics, and if you want to, educate me with the Autobot Megatron. This side of the box is the same line art, but it's a close-up shot. Moving on to the back of the box, we have the Megatron kit showing off the articulation, the details, what's in the box, and the close-up shot of the model kit. And inside the box, we are greeted with... Five bags of runners, and a manual. Starting off with runner A, we're gonna have some glossy black parts. And if you can already tell, we have some leg parts and parts for the fusion cannon. Runner B1 is gonna be more black parts. Looks like we got some hand options right up here. And I think there are some waist parts. Two runner B2s, more black parts. Runner C1 is going to be the light gray parts. Runner C2, light gray parts again. And these are parts for the head. Runner D1, light gray parts again. Looks like we have parts for the chest, the back, and for the arms. Two runner D2s, more gray parts. Two of runner E1s, dark gray. And looks like we have parts for the inner frame. E2 is gonna be more dark gray parts. And as you can tell, they look like tank wheels. And as a heads up, Flame Toys model kits don't transform to robot mode and vehicle mode. Runner F1 is going to be the dark red parts. Runner F2 is going to be the clear red parts, and those are the eyes. Skipping runner F3, maybe that's an Autobot version, I'm not sure, correct me down below. We're going to go right to F4, going back to the dark gray parts, and you have two of these. Runner F5 is going to be the dark gray parts again. Runner G1, you got two of these, and G2, they're going to be just polycap parts. Smallish, medium sized sticker, whatever you want to call it. Well, the only sticker I'm going to use is the Decepticon logo. A bag of two small screws. Take a look at the manual, and of course, the cover always looks better than the box art, in my opinion. Take a look at the back of the manual, we have Megatron doing cool poses and a rear shot. And right down there is how you clean the part off the runner. And inside the manual, looks like you're going to be using all the parts, of course. So that's about it for the unboxing. Don't mind the mess because there is a lot of runners, which means it's going to be a long build. But hey, you know what? It's going to be worth it at the end. And I am really excited to put Megatron together. And I'll see you guys right after that. And here is Megatron in all of his glory. As for building experience, yeah, there were some areas that were actually quite difficult, but most of the time, it's actually very easy. Flame Toys did an amazing job of improving kit after kit. Now, I did mention there are some areas that are kind of hard, but the only areas that are difficult would be the tiny little red details on the skirt. As for the design of Megatron, well, all I could say is, it's interesting. Yeah, I am kind of used to having Megatron having spiky armor, especially in the Bavers or in Prime, but they would point up instead of pointing down in the angle. I am talking about this leg part. Like I said, I never got into the IDW comics. For the scene lines on this model kit, there's actually not really much. Even if there are, they're actually really well hidden, especially on the biceps right here, you could get away as a detail. Even on the forearms, there's even a seam line up and down on the thigh and on the back leg as well. But the only thing that's gonna bother you is gonna be the back of the feet. For stickers, you can see I already put the Decepticon logo and these two goes onto the chest. These stickers goes onto the forearm, one each. These little red triangles goes onto the thigh armor to each side, pay attention which side it goes on. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong on this one, 
those little tiny red stickers goes onto the side of the knee armor. Finally, these two black or maybe dark gray stickers goes on to the lower part of the leg. That's about it for the out of box presentation. I forgot to tell you that it looks amazing even if you don't apply the stickers. What I forgot to tell you is that this little gap right here between the waist and the lower torso, it kind of bothers me a bit. But if you really think about it, it does make sense. And I'll tell you later why in the video. I'm gonna work on this kit right now and I'll see you guys right after that. And here is Megatron when you put all the work in and he looks even better. Well, of course he does look better when you put the work in. Even though it's not necessary, but I did put in bits of silver to make it pop a little more. That's on the fusion cannon and spoiler alert, that is the only weapon accessories you get. And on some parts of the bodies, which is on this side of the leg, on the thigh, and bits on the bicep. Speaking of accessories, of course, you already have the fusion cannon, like I already mentioned. You can put it on either arm, but of course, you always want to put it on the right arm. And for hand options, you have the closed fist and the open palm hands, and that's about it for the accessories. Wish it had some more accessories, but hey, Megatron with the fusion cannon is good enough for me. So moving on with the articulation, you do get a double ball joint, forward and backwards movement on the shoulder, it can move up that far, and of course it does rotate. I don't know if you already saw this, but the shoulder pad can move up and down ever so slightly. Bicep swivel, double bend on the elbow, which gives you a little bit more than 90 degrees. This was interesting. Inside the forearm, there is a ball joint, and up there, there is a peg on the wrist, but you do have everything you need to do. Rotate and just wiggle it around. And onto the torso, the upper part does move on a ball joint. Now. Remember how I said the gap did kind of bother me, but if you think about it, it does make sense. Because on the lower part of the torso, there is a ball joint. And since it's double ball joint, it has a pretty decent ab crunch and it can move back that far. Moving on to the skirt now, the front skirt can move up and down ever so slightly. I think I find that a little unnecessary. Moving on to the side skirt, and here's where it gets interesting. Now. The side skirt right here, it's not connected onto the side, it's connected to the back skirt. Alright, I just gotta pop off the upper half so you guys can have a better look at it. So, it does rotate, and check this out, it does move down and up just a little bit. Moving on to the legs, it can kick up this far, notice how it's all weird, and I'll show you why later. can move back that far, and as for the splits, it can, it does have a dice hole. Now, if you bring the legs down, it can kick up a little higher, which is underwhelming because it's a 90 degree kick. The thigh armor can move up and down. Double bend at the knee, which is a little bit more than 90 degrees. The foot can shift down and up. I know you can barely see it. The foot is on a ball joint as for the pivot. It's pretty good. And the toe itself is on a ball joint. Overall. The articulation is good in some areas and lacking in others. And I'll talk about the elbow bend, the knee bends, and how the leg can swing forward and back. It could have been a little better, but I think due to the design, I can understand. Maybe I'm wrong. Moving on to size comparisons, here is Megatron right next to the IDW Optimus Prime and right next to the most beloved Seeker. Thundercracker. And if you guys already own an IDW Optimus Prime, you owe it to yourself to get an IDW Megatron. Yeah, I did spoil the final conclusion. So here it is right next to the Warfare Cybertron Megatron. And as you can see, the model kit is just a tiny bit shorter than the Warfare Cybertron figure. It's basically the same size as a Voyager class. Finally, here it is right next to Godzilla, Optimus Prime, and the Gundam. So that's about it for the size comparisons, let's move on to my final thoughts. So for my final thoughts, well I already spoiled it on the size comparisons. Even though the color separation and the out of box presentation is still great, but you still have to put more work into it. But when you're detail painting, it's not as bad. Maybe on the chest area, well that's because you're going to have to apply few thin layers of paint. You know what? Since they already made a G1 Optimus Prime, let's hope later on down the road, Flame Toys will make a G1 Megatron model kit. That would be great. All right, so that's about it for the review. Thank you guys so much for watching. And the fact that this is my 100th video, that is quite the milestone. So if you guys wanna see more reviews, 
be sure to subscribe, like the video, comment down below if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, thank you guys for helping me reach 60 subscribers. Now, I already mentioned this when I already reached 50, but by the end of the year, let's try to get to 100. I mean, I know it's a big goal, but we'll see.